a chapter of my dissertation work. Uh, so, as you might have known from this uh, symposium, uh, describing phenotypic variation is really important for uh, understanding ge geographic variation and adaptation in general. Mm -hmm. And in this talk, um, I will give you uh, some highlights and some, uh, some highlights from my preliminary analyses on a common greenhouse experiment that I conducted on an invasive species here in the southwest. Uh, biological invasions are good systems, excellent systems for studying uh, geographic variation simply because it lets us look at more than one replicate range or region. Um, and if you plot these uh, mean trait values, or th that's what I look at, through uh, environmental gradients, we'll have a better understanding on what uh, environmental factors drive these uh, um, adaptive traits. So to test my questions, I use Sahara mustard as uh, my study system. It's sort of, it's this mustard that rolls as a tumbleweed in the Mojave Desert and most of the deserts in the Southwest. It was introduced in uh, about 90 years ago in the Coachella Valley. So to guide my work, uh, I asked two main questions. My first question is pretty straightforward. Is there a phenotypic variation in traits among ranges and among populations within ranges? My second question is, do differences in population mean trait values correspond to environmental gradients associated with source populations, these locations where I collected these, uh, these plants? So to answer my first question, I did a greenhouse experiment where I artificially crossed plants from the two uh, ranges, native and invasive, and from each range I took, I selected seven populations, and then from each, each of the populations, I made, I made it five families, and for each family combination, I chose uh, five replications. So given that these uh, these plants that I measured had parents that I knew and were grown in a common environment, I think it's it's safe for me to as assume that all the or most of the genetic variation that I'm observing is a uh, most of the variation that I'm observing is due to a genetic basis. And these next two slides just shows you where, uh, where those uh, samples were collected. And I didn't go to the native range. They were collected for me. Um, and this is where the, oops. This is where the Southwest collection sites are situated. And for the traits that I measured, I included uh, leaf traits and reproductive traits, so I can compare my results to other studies on plants and uh, invasive systems. Uh, I also included phenology, oh, there it is, phenology and uh, branching traits, because just by reading um, literature and looking at uh, these plants in the, in the field, I think these are two ecologically important traits to, to look at. So to address question two, I constructed these trait environment clients um, using, oops, using bioclim data, worldclim data. So I plotted it in GIS, like what uh, Angela did, and um, extracted uh, a bunch of uh, environmental data using spatial coordinates from my sampling locations. And then, uh, oops, what? And then I made um, interaction plots in order to visualize those clients from the native and invasive ranges. And then I used an ANCOVA approach using environment as a covariate and range as a categorical variable and trait values as a response. So now moving on to my results, some of my results and answers. Now I measured like 60 
features, so I'm only going to show three. Um, so moving on to question one. So just by looking at plants in the greenhouse, I can already see these are plants that I grown at, grew at the same time. Um, I, I can already see much variation from the native compared to the invasive range. And if I compare them visually among populations, I can see that uh, they already look different in form. So now moving on to uh, my first set of results on branching um, traits. So I'm showing you branch angle, how wide are the branches spread in the plant. So when we compare the variation in the two, two ranges, you can already see that uh, the native range has much more variation in means, mean trait values compared to the invasive range. But even though I observed these uh, differences in mean between the two, two ranges, I didn't find any, anything significant. Again, just by looking at plants in the greenhouse, I can already see that they have different reproductive phenology in the, in the common, common greenhouse. And even in my field sites, oops, even in my field sites where I collect them, you can already see in this picture that uh, some plants are already seeding, some plants are just developing flowers. Oops, sorry. And I see the same pattern where there's a lot of variation in the, in the native range, but uh, very little var variation relatively in the invasive range. Oops, sorry again. Um, and then, um, but even, even with that striking variation, I didn't find any variation among ranges. And I use a, a mixed model, a mixed effects model with uh, ranges, ranges of fixed factor and among population within ranges as a uh, random term, if you're interested. And then, um, interestingly, I found differences in uh, indentation width. So I, I measured a set of uh, leaf traits, leaf margin traits, and I found that the, the width of the indentation, these uh, little serrations on the leaf are much more wider in the native range compared to the uh, invasive range. And I did find significant differences between uh, the two ranges. So to answer my first question, sim the simple answer is uh, they all varied uh, between in between populations within ranges, but when I compared ranges, only indentation width varied significantly. So moving on to my second question. So I'm only showing results that have um, significant interactions, and I'm only showing results with invasive clients that are either decreasing or increasing. I'm sh showing no flat invasive clients. So for branch angle, I found that um, it, it decreases in the invasive range and also de decreases in the uh, native range as a response to temperature. For precipitation, it, it goes the other way, it increases. Uh, with an increasing temperature in the invasive range, but has the same opposite trend in the, in the native range compared to the, uh, this line right here. So for flowering phenology, I found that um, for all the environmental gradients that I, I ran these uh, linear regressions with, I only found lat latitude to be the most uh, significant uh, factor in that both I saw these two trend lines that are increasing but the slope for uh, for the invasive range is much more uh, le much less steeper and I'm observing this really rapid phenology going on oops in the I don't know how to work this thing in the uh, 
in an invasive range. So that might be an important trait for this plant to be able to outcompete natives in the southwestern deserts. And then I also found significant interactions between a, a range in temperature and that for uh, indentation width. Oh, I misspelled it, sorry. Uh, but uh, for the native range, I saw this increasing climb. So with increasing temperature, the, the width of those uh, leaf uh, serrations increases. But I see the opposite trend in the invasive range in that uh, these indentations get smaller and smaller with incre increasing uh, temperature. And my, my, my hunch is that this is probably a uh, an, uh, an adaptation for uh, reducing leaf damage. So it turns out that when you have more of these serrations on your leaf margins, you can um, cool off the leaves better without losing any water, if that makes sense. And it's also associated with increased water use efficiency. So very, I think it's a very important trait for a plant in the desert. So the short answer for my second question is yes, but it, it, it depends on which trait I'm looking at and what environmental gradients um, uh, are being examined. So to highlight my results, there's really broad climate adaptation for branch traits. And I think this is due to the fact that it's really important for its dispersal and reproduction. It grows as a tumbleweed. Its mode of seed dispersal is rolling um, in the desert. And each branch is actually a, an actual inflorescence. So it holds all the flower, flowers and the fruits. Uh, for flowering, flowering phenology is um, positively associated with latitude. And I see this in a lot of uh, plant systems, but I also think that this is important for this species in the invasive range because it allows it to outcompete um, native plants in the southwest by reprodu reproducing early and reproducing fast. And then um, I found that uh, the natives have broader ser leaf serrations and it's for both ranges is uh, it's associated with temperature but for the invasive range it's negatively associated with temperature and i think that's because it's associated with increased convective heat loss and increased water use efficiency to reduce leaf damage and to be more efficient in the desert and with that these are my funding sources I would like to thank my advisor, Dan Marshall, for being patient with me. Um, and uh, my committee, Joy, who uh, um, helped me with the greenhouse, and my, my precious undergraduates who helped me measure these uh, traits, and my wife. We haven't had a honeymoon because of this uh, <laughs> experiment. So with that, I'm taking uh, questions. So um, it's funny because I, I discovered this watching uh, Anthony Bourdain, when he, uh, the travel guy, because um, uh, uh, the prevailing hypothesis is that this came with date trees in the southwest when they were date palms in the 1930s when they were trying to like plant them. And it turns out there, there's this one, the oldest date, date palm distrib distributor in the Southwest is still there. Um, but that's for my next, uh, my third chapter on uh, the origins of this uh, plant. But I think uh, it's somewhere in the Middle East. But I, where, where exactly, I don't know.
do I have time for more questions? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Is that, is yeah. that at the same latitude though? Is it, is it approximately? Uh, they're in the same latitude and uh, range. So. Yeah. I guess.